Hi, it's Katrina. From an Egyptian princess with some troubles of the heart to a secret code in a medieval book that still hasn't been deciphered, here are some mysterious discoveries that scientists can't explain. The Heart Troubled Princess a small Egyptian princess is changing the way historians look at the unhealthy habits of ancient people. The princess, who lived 3,500 years ago, was discovered entombed inside a royal mortuary temple. After studying her body, scientists were shocked at what they found. The princess is currently housed at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Her name is Amos Mariet Amon, the daughter of Pharaoh Sekinere Tao II. Her name translates in English as Child of the Moon, Beloved of Amun. Neither she nor her father are household names these days, but back in 1500 BC, they were both part of the royal lineage that ruled over the people of Egypt. After her mummified remains were excavated from Deir el-Bari near the city of Luxor, scientists got to poke around her body, and they soon determined that the princess would have lived a much longer life if she'd cut out some calories and did some more exercise. Amos died in her 40s from an extremely poor diet, and she wasn't the only one either. Scientists say Amos Marriott Amon had five major arteries that were blocked. That's a pretty big health concern for a woman in her 40s. Gregory Thomas, a professor of cardiology at the University of California, said if she'd come into his office in modern times, he would have recommended her an immediate double bypass surgery. Amos is currently the earliest known person to suffer from coronary atherosclerosis. It's a fairly common issue in America these days, caused by plaque building up inside the arteries, ultimately leading to a heart attack. Scientists were so curious by the woman's terrible heart condition that they did scans of 52 other mummies inside the museum's collection. They found that half of them had similarly clogged arteries. This means that ancient Egyptian royalty were eating themselves into an early grave. But why? Blocked arteries and heart attacks are falsely attributed to the modern diet. This new study proves that ancient Egyptians suffered from similar problems. Only it wasn't from processed foods or smoking. It was because elite members of society were pampered and had access to pork, bread, and honey. Many royal Egyptians were even found to be suffering from obesity. And now for a quick break because it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to Big Doug and Maggie's Kelly for supporting this channel. We wouldn't be here without you. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries or dinosaurs or things scientists can't explain. We've got it all. The Unbroken Code In the University of Florida's collection of rare books, the oldest also happens to be one of the very first added to the collection 100 years ago. The book is bound in leather, a version of the New Testament that was written in Latin nearly 800 years ago. What makes it so mysterious is that parts of the book have never been deciphered. The ancient Bible contains strange notes written in a language that nobody can understand. The exact date the New Testament was written is unknown, but it was around the year 1250 AD. That was in the true Middle Ages, before anyone knew the Earth revolved around the Sun. It was a time when the Crusades raged across Europe, and Constantinople was considered the greatest city in the world. The book was published as a standard New Testament Bible, but as it made its way through Europe, several people wrote notes in the book's margins. Most of the notes appear to be from the 14th century, and a lot of them are nothing more than random letters or numbers. There are passages of brown ink and red ink, but it doesn't matter what color the ink is because none of it's legible. There are random strings of repeating letters that appear to be a code. Some scribbles look like words, but they don't mean anything. At least they don't mean anything that modern scientists can understand. At the very back of the book is a bizarre list of letters next to numbers. It looks like a key to cracking the secret code, but no one's ever been able to make sense of it. You can give it a shot yourself by checking out the digitized version online. So many universities have wanted copies that Florida made a digitized version to save themselves some time. The Face in the Stone A mystery has been revealed in the dense forest of a Canadian island. A stone face was recently spotted peeking out from a rocky outcrop near a coastal town on Vancouver Island. It's a remnant of an ancient Native American tribe, but nobody knows who carved it, when, or what else might be hiding in the forest here. To be entirely honest, nobody can say for sure if the face was carved by human hands or if it was created by Mother Nature herself. 
The carving does look exactly like a human face, so it's hard to imagine that nature molded such an outrageous coincidence. Local leader of the Tishat First Nation Beachkeeper team, Frederick Sieber, said he's divided on the origin of the face as well. However, he's certain that at some point, his ancestors laid eyes on the very same spot. Maybe they thought it was a people even older than themselves who carved it, or maybe they saw the rock and thought it could easily be chiseled into a face. Native American people have been on Vancouver Island since time unknown. In the area around the town, there are around 300 recorded archaeological sites. It's not as if it would be unusual to see a massive head carved by people thousands of years ago. The face on the rock cliff is in such an isolated place that it was originally found in 2008 by a kayaker from Washington. Locals searched for the face for years, but only recently came across it again. It's 40 feet up from the water, and today Day, it's nearly invisible underneath the shrubs growing on the cliff. The Mystery of Jene Jeno Prior to colonialism, great kingdoms ruled Africa. All across the continent, cities and wealthy empires prospered for centuries. But starting around 900 years ago, things started to decline. The Sahara started to lose its moisture and greenery, and things took a turn for the worst. The ruins of the lost African kingdoms are still spread across the land, and one of the oldest and most mysterious is the sub-Saharan city of Jene Jeno. The city's ruins can be found in the West African country of Mali. The city was founded around 250 BC, then blossomed because of the fertile agricultural lands. It became a hub for trade, and soon the population grew to a staggering 20,000 people. It's believed that the city was likely the capital of a vast kingdom, but its history is lost. So, unfortunately, scientists don't know for sure. There is scant evidence of around 15 settlements in the surrounding area, like small suburbs spreading out from the main metropolis. But since they had no writing system, the people here left nothing behind to detail their politics or beliefs. Starting in the 9th century, Jene Jeno began to collapse. Muslim traders built their own city nearby and called it Jene. And by the 14th century, the city that had prospered for over 1,000 years was reduced to rubble. Nobody knows what caused its ultimate demise. Though there are guesses, the most likely explanation is that they simply weren't relevant anymore as the times changed. The real mystery is in the archaeological ruins of the city. Some of the most interesting finds at Jene Jeno include terracotta sculptures. There are tons of terracotta figures of a bearded man with an almost Greek-styled helmet riding a horse. Nobody knows if this was a king or a deity, though he's often depicted with people kneeling in front of him. There are also an alarming number of figurines being attacked by snakes or suffering from symptoms of disease. It seems that the people in the city contended with animals life and rampant sickness. Another bizarre thing is that over the last three decades of excavations, no palaces or temples have been identified. This is really wild because most ancient societies had temples to worship their gods, and they had palaces to hold their kings and queens. But here, in the Sub-Sahara, there is no indication that the people worshipped anything or were ruled over by anyone. The Head in the Well A head that was pulled out of a Chinese well is changing the history of human evolution. The skull belongs to a new branch of our family tree, a new species of human dubbed the Dragon Man. Scientists say the Dragon Man could be more closely related to you and me than our Neanderthal cousins. The fossilized skull sat at the bottom of a well in China for 90 years, and the story of its discovery is almost as fascinating as the mystery surrounding its origin. It was discovered in 1933 by Chinese laborers who were building a bridge in the province of Harbin. This was during the brutal occupation by the Japanese. Because the person who found the skull understood its importance, they didn't want the Japanese to get a hold of it. So they wrapped the skull carefully and threw it down an abandoned well. It only resurfaced in 2018. The man who hid the skull all those years ago revealed his secret to his grandson in the moments before his death. Just think of how dramatic that must have been. This guy was on his deathbed and then he drew his grandson in closer to whisper in his ear, the skull is in the well. And lo and behold, that skull is changing history. An international team of scientists have been closely studying the skull. It belonged to a living hominin 146,000 years ago. It's unique in that it has modern and primitive features. 
The face highly resembles Homo sapiens, yet the skull is far larger than an ordinary human skull. It has enough room for a modern human brain and then some. Professor Chris Stringer from the Natural History Museum in London explained it in the simplest terms, saying, This guy had a huge head. The skull is unique enough that scientists think it belonged to a species all its own. That means only a single skull remains of a species that looked like us but was far larger. They were real, living giants, and yet only a single piece of evidence has been found that they existed. King Alfred's Bones In a cardboard box stored at a museum in Winchester, a fragment of a male pelvic bone sat undisturbed for years. It might even belong to a legendary king. Scientists at Oxford University radiocarbon dated the mysterious bone and think it either came from King Alfred the Great or his less famous son, King Edward the Elder. But what in the world was the bone doing in a cardboard box in the first place? And just who was King Alfred? King Alfred was the very first king of the English. He was the first man to rule the country and the only English king in history to have great pegged on to the end of his name. The reason he was so great was that he prevented England from falling into the hands of Viking invaders. He won multiple victories, the most famous of which was at the Battle of Eddington in 878 AD. Alfred agreed to allow Vikings to live in their own small piece of the country. He gave the Scandinavians East Anglia and the Midlands, and also converted their leader, Guthrum, to Christianity. He liberated London from the Vikings and was just generally a great leader. When Alfred died in 899 of what was likely Crohn's disease and a bit of hemorrhoid, he was buried at Old Minster, but four years after his death, his remains were transferred into a new building called New Minster. About 200 years later, New Minster was demolished by King Henry I. The ancient bones of King Alfred and his son Edward were moved into a new monastery at Hyde Abbey. Then, under the reign of King Henry VIII in the 16th century, Hyde Abbey was dissolved and was brought to ruin. The royal graves were also completely forgotten. At some point in the 18th century, a jail was built near where the old abbey was destroyed. The local governor commissioned a garden for his wife, and during construction of the garden, workers unearthed a mysterious coffin. This may have been King Alfred's forgotten tomb, but instead of keeping it, the workers dismantled the coffin and sold the metal for scrap. Then the bones were scattered and lost. In the 1990s, the first real archaeological excavation took place. That was when the pelvic bone was found and put in a cardboard box. It wasn't until 2002 that scientists at the University of Oxford dated the pelvic bone. It comes from the same time that Alfred died. Maybe it belongs to him, or maybe it belongs to his son. Nobody knows for sure. But it could be the only fragment of bone left from England's greatest king. Cairn T A burial cairn was discovered on an Irish hilltop that may have been the tomb of a legendary prophet from the Bible. It's called Cairn T, and it's located in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Cairn T rests upon a grassy hill looking out over endless miles of sprawling farmland where very few people live. It's not exactly attracting tourists, but in the distance, way off on the horizon, you can see the Hill of Tara. The Hill of Tara is an extremely popular tourist site. It was the seat of power for the High Kings of Ireland thousands of years ago. In ancient times, this part of Ireland was an important landscape. Kings ruled, important people were buried under mounds of rock, and there were small primitive settlements. But what does that have to do with a biblical prophet? Let me introduce you to Jeremiah, the prophet from the Old Testament, who supposedly escaped the destruction of Jerusalem in 587 BC with the Ark of the Covenant. Jeremiah was the one who warned the Jewish king that the Babylonians would destroy them if they didn't get their act together. Jeremiah was imprisoned for his prophecies. Then, sure enough, the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem and tore down the first temple. There are no official records of what happened to Jeremiah after the destruction of Jerusalem, but one account says that he escaped with the Ark and sailed to Ireland. Jeremiah also brought two daughters of the Jewish king with him, and they married with the Irish High Kings. The House of Windsor, the line of descent that Queen Elizabeth II was part of, claimed their heritage could be traced back to Jeremiah's journey. The royal family in England believes themselves to be full descendants of the House of David in Jerusalem. And that's a shocking fact that not many people know. Cairn T may contain the bones of Jeremiah, or it might not. Experts don't really know, but still, it's a popular theory.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Coffins of the Cursed Well 13 completely sealed ancient Egyptian graves were recently excavated from an alleged cursed well, where they were buried 36 feet underground in several niches. The wooden coffins, rare for their remarkably preserved state and even bearing some of their original colors, were stacked atop one another within the tombs. For thousands of years, grave robbers miraculously never found them, leaving them intact just as they were almost 5,000 years ago. This amazing find offers archaeologists a privileged glimpse into the past. Discovered in the ancient necropolis of Saqqara, roughly 19 miles south of Cairo, the burials are in a location rumored to be plagued by something called the Curse of the Pharaohs, where anyone who disturbs ancient Egyptian remains stands to face bad luck, illness, or even death. In this case, curiosity overrode any superstitious fears the archaeological team may have had going into the excavation. I mean, we're already in a pandemic. What more can happen? The curse may have already been unleashed. For now, the mummy's identities remain a mystery, and scientists believe there may be more buried in the shaft. Hoping to further our understanding of non-elite burials, researchers are trying to learn more about the tomb's inhabitants by examining their grave goods and inscriptions. Giant Footprint In one of the most bizarre discoveries ever, in a rocky area in South Africa, a hunter discovered what looks like an enormous fossilized footprint embedded in the rock. Measuring four feet tall, to some it is evidence that giants once roamed the earth a long, long time ago. Estimated to be between 200 million and 3 billion years old, based on the age of the granite, the alleged footprint was discovered by a man named Stoffel Coetzee. Of course, this date immediately leads to doubt and speculation. How is this possible? Author and explorer Michael Tellinger, who is often called South Africa's Indiana Jones, has taken pictures next to the footprint. His website describes Coetzee as a farmer who found the footprint in 1931, while the Vintage News claims that Coetzee was a hunter who happened upon the discovery in 1912. Hard to say which version is true. Perhaps neither if you ask Dr. J. L. Weil, a scientist who is a Christian but not a Christian scientist, according to the man's blog. Weil visited the so-called footprint in South Africa in 2004 and reported that the formation is, in his words, hardly a footprint. It is difficult to find, but the structure appears to be granite, and granite is a volcanic or igneous rock. Dr. Weil explained that granite forms underground and could therefore not contain a true foot imprint. The last time the rock was soft enough for a foot to impact it would have been when it was still underneath the Earth's surface. Some suspect that the giant foot might be a carving because it is in granite and is in a recognized geological part of South Africa, but it is not easy to step on a rock and leave a footprint. I mean, have you ever tried it? Other people argue that this type of granite underwent several cooling phases, so it may have been softer or made of granules at some point, making it seem easier to leave a footprint. Regardless, most scientists and geologists that have gone to the site argue that it might look like a footprint with a stretch of the imagination, but it is not really evidence of giants. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Would be fun if we could all go to these places in person and see for ourselves. At least, I've heard it's a great vacation spot. Mystery Coin Hoard Earlier this year, Israeli teenagers volunteering on an archaeological dig made quite the discovery. A clay jar stuffed to the brim with gold coins, dating back 1,100 years. They were very excited, as it's not very often that people strike gold. Researchers and experts are now very curious about the 425 coins. The 24-karat gold coins trace back to the early Islamic period during the 9th century, when the Abbasid Caliphate controlled the region. One mystery surrounding the rare discovery is who left the coins at the site in the first place. They were stashed in the sand in what is now central Israel, meaning that the hoard's owner undoubtedly meant to return for his buried treasure. This kind of money would have been a small fortune at the time. Clearly, they never came back since it is safe to say they have been hidden for over 1,000 years. Included among the coin collection were small gold cuttings which served as change. In the past, they would literally cut the coin into small pieces to get smaller units. Another thing was a gold solidus that was minted in Constantinople during the reign of Theophilus, who ruled from 829 to 842. The fact that a Byzantine emperor's coin was found in an Islamic coin hoard means that the countries still did business with each other, or at least had economic ties, even though they were rivals and often at war. Theophilus personally led armies against the Arabs in the 800s. 
As Mark Santora wrote for the New York Times, whether it was through war or trade, money kept flowing. This excavation site near Tel Aviv and the time period is one of the least understood in the area's history, and more finds lead to more questions than answers. Mustang Caves Also called the Sky Caves of Nepal, the Mustang Caves are a collection of around 10,000 artificially constructed rock-cut cave tombs in Nepal's Mustang district. Nepal annexed the region, formerly known as the Kingdom of Lo, during the 18th century. Carved roughly 155 feet above the valley basin below, the caves overlook the village of Samzong and served as a multi-level early apartment of sorts for residents. Archaeologists only began exploring them in recent decades, and so far they have found an abundance of artifacts, including silk fabric, bronze jewelry, and rice-filled bamboo baskets situated alongside the skeletons of people who died centuries ago. Scientists were intrigued by who these people were. Where did they come from? A genome analysis of eight of the individuals laid to rest in the tombs revealed that they were descendants of the first inhabitants of the Himalayas, who dared to colonize the high-altitude region despite its inhospitable conditions. Plagued by low oxygen levels, light vegetation at best, and very little rain, it's no wonder nobody was interested in living in the Himalayan high mountain valleys, making them among the last places in the world that humans colonized, with the first settlers arriving just a little over 3,000 years ago. The people who inhabited the Mustang Caves had a DNA profile similar to modern-day Sherpa and Tibetan populations, indicating that they were genetically adapted to living in high altitudes when they arrived there. There were three distinct periods of occupation, each marked by cultural changes and shifts in burial practices, suggesting religious transitions occurred over time. Some burials bear evidence of Buddhist practices, while other cavities were likely carved quickly during a time of instability. But exactly who the people were that lived here remains a mystery, one which archaeologists are continuously trying to figure out. Saudi Desert Gates in 2017, archaeologists identified around 400 previously unknown stone structures, called gates, in the Arabian desert. Thought to be constructed by nomadic tribes thousands of years ago, the gates made from basalt boulders call attention to the lack of scientific attention paid to the vast region. We tend to think of Saudi Arabia as desert, but in practice there's a huge archaeological treasure trove out there and it needs to be identified and mapped," said archaeologist David Kennedy, the lead study author of a paper on the ruins. You can't see them very well from the ground level, but once you get up a few hundred feet or with a satellite even higher, they stand out beautifully. Very little is known about the people who built the stone structures, who are thought to be the ancestors of the region's modern-day Bedouin people. The most famous structures, located in Jordan, are called kites for their resemblance to children's kites from an aerial view. They were first discovered during the 1920s by pilots flying overhead. However, Saudi Arabia does not want international teams of archaeologists coming to dig up the past. Researchers believe that the kites may have been used for hunting by ancient nomadic tribes. With some structures measuring over a mile long, their converging walls may have functioned as a sort of funnel to trap and kill migrating antelopes. Finding definitive answers about the structures and their purpose is an ongoing battle for archaeologists, who struggle to obtain permission to fly over them. While the advent of Google Earth has helped reveal the gate's existence, nothing compares to the ability to excavate in person, which will hopefully happen sometime in the future. Horned Face Ornament Southeast of Krakow, Poland, in the village of Biskupais, archaeologists recently unearthed an ancient ornament bearing an eerie horned face. Measuring just four inches across, this strange object was found beneath one of three ancient homesteads dating back to the Stone Age. The ornament contains clearly defined eyes and a nose, as well as two horn-like protrusions. It was likely part of a bowl or some other larger object, according to lead archaeologist Marta Korsinska, but the bizarre face comes with numerous unanswered questions. Today, we are unable to conclusively interpret this portrayal, Korsinska told The Express, speculating that it may have spiritual origins. One thing experts were sure of is that the artifact demonstrates a connection between Neolithic peoples in Poland, Hungary, and Slovakia. The ornament was found among numerous other ceramic objects, including items made from volcanic obsidian, a material that does not occur naturally in Poland. Similar objects found in Slovakia and Hungary trace to prehistoric cultures that lived along the Danube River and spread rapidly throughout Europe around 7,000 years ago. Excavations were stopped for the season, but archaeologists hope to return to the site in hopes of discovering more artifacts offering an unprecedented glimpse into Neolithic culture. Royston Cave 
Located near Cambridge, England, Royston Cave is an artificial cave believed to have once been used by the Order of the Knights Templar as a secret meeting place. Measuring roughly 26 feet high and 17 feet in diameter, the circular, bell-shaped chamber was accidentally discovered during the mid-18th century, and its origins remain unknown to this day. The walls contain numerous medieval carvings which have only otherwise been seen in the Czech Republic and Israel, and the cave may have once been divided into two levels, separated by a wooden floor. The carvings depict numerous religious events and figures, including Christ's crucifixion, possibly the Holy Sepulchre and the Holy Family, and the saints Catherine, Lawrence, Christopher, and George. These and other images seem to date back to the 13th century, but their origins, along with the cave's functions, are a long-standing source of contention among experts. Due to its proximity to a former Knights Templar stronghold, a prevailing theory is that the secret society used Royston Cave. The dwelling may have also served as a storage house for Augustinian monks or as a Neolithic flint mine. Ancient Human-Like Footprints Eerily human-like footprints discovered in Crete in 2017 suggest that a previously unknown hominid, in other words an ancient primate closer to humans than chimps, wandered the area as far back as 5.7 million years ago. In a less than 43-square-foot area, Swedish paleontologist Per Alberg and his colleagues identified over 50 footprints, most likely left behind by a bipedal creature, an animal that walked on two feet, and likely possessed other hominid features. Crete is far from other parts of the world where similarly aged hominid-like footprints have been found, such as Chad, Ethiopia, and Kenya, making the discovery especially controversial. According to the researchers, if the creature was not a hominid, it was a primate that evolved independently and developed similar characteristics, such as the ability to walk on two feet. If the footprints belong to a hominid, a human ancestor, then they stand to turn the current scientific understanding of human history on its head. As things currently stand, researchers generally accept 65,000 years ago as the rough date of when our ancestors left Africa. The discovery would rewind that outward migration exponentially, requiring experts to untangle and rewrite the collective human narrative. It looks like footprints just make us all go crazy. The Havering Horde Popularly known as a Bronze Age mystery, the Havering Horde is the largest ever collection of Bronze Age artifacts ever discovered in London. Unearthed in 2018, the nearly 3,000-year-old hoard contains axe heads, spearheads, and fragments of swords, daggers, and knives, as well as other objects rarely discovered in the UK, amounting to 453 artifacts total, dating back to between 900 and 800 BC. Some of the items are weapons that appear to have been deliberately broken, as well as harness rings and woodworking tools. Whoever buried the items stacked them carefully and methodically, perhaps for later use, but that intended purpose remains unknown. The collection, which is currently on display at the Museum of London Docklands, raises numerous yet unanswered questions for archaeologists, including who buried the hoard and why. They could have done so as a religious offering, as an attempt to control access to the material the objects were made from, or even as a symbolic rejection of bronze as the use of iron emerged, rendering the former material essentially valueless. It may have also been stashed with intentions to retrieve, melt down the iron, and reuse. X-rays show that even smaller artifacts may be contained within the larger objects, furthering the mystery behind their origins. Experts have determined that the items represent a trading link between east of modern-day London, along the banks of the River Thames, and mainland Europe. The American Lost Colony One of the earliest groups of settlers in the United States, including the first European baby born in the United States, inhabited the long-lost colony of Roanoke Island east of modern-day Virginia during the 1570s and 80s, from which they disappeared without a trace. The group of several hundred stayed on Roanoke while their ship returned to England to resupply and pick up more people bound for the New World. When the ship arrived back in the U.S. over two years later after facing some delays, its crew noticed that Roanoke's inhabitants had vanished. The island was entirely deserted, and the only clue the word Croatoan carved into a tree. For the next two decades, numerous searches attempted to find the missing 150 or so settlers, but to no avail. Theories abounded, including the idea that the Roanoke settlers had been captured by passing Spanish ships, died from disease, or tried sailing back to England on their own. Archaeologists have been trying to untangle the story of the lost Roanoke colony for centuries. 
A new book written by historian Scott Dawson alleges that the Roanoke colony assimilated into local indigenous populations and adapted to their ways of life. Artifacts discovered by British archaeologists at Native American sites, including English bowls, a sword hilt, and part of a writing tablet, serve to bolster this controversial theory. In fact, to the experts behind this idea, there's no mystery at all. The English were struggling on their own, so they split up and joined indigenous tribes, taking their own goods with them. Not surprisingly, this theory is met with opposition, but it's perhaps the most solid and reliable explanation yet for what happened to the Roanoke colony. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Valley of the Whales Nicknamed the Valley of the Whales and oddly situated in the Egyptian desert, the Wadi al-Hitan archaeological site boasts a large collection of whale remains from the earliest and long-extinct suborder, Archaeoceti. These prehistoric whales, known under the species name Basilosaurus, flourished 37 million years ago during the Mesozoic era, when the Tethys Ocean existed between the ancient continents of Gondwana and Laurasia. Unlike modern whales, Basilosaurus had two small, perfectly developed but relatively useless hind legs protruding from its flanks. It did not use its legs for swimming, indicating that modern whales evolved from terrestrial animals, according to vertebrate paleontologist Philip Gingrich, who spoke with National Geographic. Gingrich has spent the better part of his career arguing in favor of this theory, which flies directly in the face of the long-held belief that whales represent a lack of evolution. He and his colleagues have discovered the remains of over 1,000 whales at Wadi al-Hitan over a 27-year span. According to Gingrich's theory, a common ancestor between whales and all other creatures, a salamander-like tetrapod, hoisted its body out of the water and onto land around 360 million years ago. Over time, its fins developed into legs, and its body adapted to life on land. But some of these creatures made their way back into the water and lost any reason to have legs, and their bodies readjusted to a marine habitat. This is considered an amazing feat among experts, so impressive in fact that they can't quite explain how it happened. Historically renowned scientists, including Charles Darwin and George Gaylord Simpson, are among the many who struggled to determine the whale's place on the evolutionary family tree. Gingrich has made remarkable strides throughout his career, identifying several previously unknown ancient cetaceans and whale ancestors and coming much closer to filling in the family tree gaps. But as discoveries like these often lead to a new set of questions, one thing is certain, it will take quite some time for scientists to fully untangle the animal kingdom's extraordinary past. Alien Artifacts in Mexico One night in 1999, Dr. Pablo Enrique Garcia Sanchez set up camp in the barren desert in the sparsely populated northeastern Mexican town of Ojuelos de Jalisco. During his stay, the man allegedly discovered a strange small rock covered in mysterious carvings, which seemed Mayan in origin to Garcia. This was highly unlikely, however, as the ancient Maya were known to have settled at least 1,000 miles away. Aztec trading routes, on the other hand, had extended pretty far north, indicating a possible source for the object. Locals told Garcia that they had been finding similar artifacts for over 80 years. Acting on rumors that a nearby cave contained hundreds more items, Garcia formed a research team called Nawi Oyin, or Fifth World, who supposedly catalogued over 400 items found throughout the area, including a helmet shaped like an alien's head. The clay and stone objects appeared to depict things like UFOs, aliens, humans in spacesuits, and scenes from outer space. For having gathered so many artifacts, Garcia's collection was suspiciously scarce by the time the academic community paid any attention to it. Critics believe that the items, which are commonly sold in the area, are fakes marketed to unsuspecting tourists. Even more strangely, internet searches turn up no verified credentials for Dr. Garcia, and no reputable websites seem to contain information about his so-called alien artifacts. It is very hard to explain Garcia's collection, and who or where he is. And now for number seven, but first, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and join us. And I wanted to give a big shout out to some longtime subscribers, DJ Basta Tusa and Be In Nature. Big thanks to both of you. Unidentified Big Cat In late 2019, Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities announced the discovery of extremely strange animal remains resembling a big cat. The creature was unearthed during excavations south of Cairo at Saqqara, an ancient town that was home to a vast burial ground and the famous Steppe Pyramid. 
While archaeologists believe the animal may be a lion or lioness, based on the ancient Egyptians' worship of felines, it looks enough out of the ordinary for them to be unsure, primarily due to its unusually large size. In an interview with Express UK, Egypt's Minister of Antiquities, Dr. Khaled El Anani, explained that the animal species will be announced once it is identified through DNA testing and CT scans. Dr. El Anani credits the ministry's use of the most advanced archaeological technology available for this and other one of a kind discoveries throughout Egypt in recent years. Many of these newly unearthed artifacts will feature in Cairo's yet unfinished Grand Egyptian Museum, or GEM, which Major General Atef Mofta recently promised will be completed by year's end. Originally scheduled to open in 2011, before apparently encountering several setbacks, the building will feature over 100,000 ancient Egyptian artifacts, making it the world's largest museum dedicated to a single civilization. Dorset Hybrids While excavating in Dorset County, England in 2015, archaeologists from Bournemouth University discovered Iron Age animal bones that were bizarrely rearranged to form mythical hybrid beasts. One cow, who was presumably sacrificed like others at the site, was situated with four horse legs, and there were several other examples of horses and cows having their bones interchanged. A two-headed sheep contained the head of a bull protruding from its rear end, and a dog skeleton was fitted with three lower jaw bones from cows. The strangest discovery was that of a young woman's remains resting atop a bed of cattle, sheep, dog, and horse bones, with the animal's bones corresponding to whatever body part of hers laid over them. Her skeleton bore evidence of her also having been sacrificed. Stories about strangely blended creatures were a known part of several ancient Mediterranean cultures, including the Greeks, Mesopotamians, and Egyptians. Prior to this seemingly rather out-of-place discovery, however, such myths were not known to play any role in Britain's ancient Celtic population. Archaeologist and excavation co-director Dr. Miles Russell said that the sacrifice of so many animals and the unusual treatment of their bones is likely to shed totally new light on Iron Age belief systems, and may suggest that the ancient Britons had beliefs or mythologies which involved hybridized animals, just like the ancient Greeks. The bones were found at a settlement that once contained 150 to 200 houses, which was likely occupied by early members of the ancient Durotrigs tribe just a few generations before Rome conquered Britain. Flint Funerary Objects While excavating a cemetery at the Karaisin archaeological site in Jordan, a team of Spanish archaeologists recently unearthed over 100 violin-shaped flint objects dating back around 10,000 years. Their findings, published in the journal Antiquity, claim that the artifacts may represent the earliest known examples of figurative art in the Middle East. The flint items are unlike any stone tools or weapons at the site, bearing no signs of wear and lacking sharp edges, archaeologist Juan José Ibáñez told New Scientist. Ibáñez and his colleagues hypothesized that the objects were possibly manufactured and discarded during funeral ceremonies involving the extraction, manipulation, and reburial of human remains. Ranging in size from 0.4 to 2 inches, the artifacts vaguely resemble the human form, according to the researchers, who mentioned the possible use of the items to express beliefs and feelings and to show their attachment to the deceased, in the words of co-author Farron Borel, who spoke with Zenger News. While the team believes that all signs point toward these conclusions, some experts remain unconvinced, citing the human tendency to detect human-like features when we want to. In other words, to see what we want to see, even in the absence of a reliable basis for doing so. Whale and Cannonball While conducting preliminary excavations ahead of the construction of a new light rail system in the Edinburgh, Scotland port town of Leith, archaeologists unearthed a strange array of artifacts, including an iron cannonball, the remains of what may have been a 16th or 17th century seawall, and a pair of bones belonging to a deceased male sperm whale. Discovered in late 2019, the matching radius and ulna are thought to be as much as 800 years old, possibly dating back to the medieval era, although experts were still awaiting radiocarbon dating results when news broke of the find. Once a whaling town, Leith was settled around that time, suggesting that a whale hunter may have brought the bones ashore as a trophy, although they would have been strange body parts to keep, according to Edinburgh Council archaeologist John Lawson, who admits that how the remains ended up at the site is a mystery. It's also possible that the whale beached itself nearby and somehow ended up at its final resting place. 
Leith's whaling history dates back to the Middle Ages, with the industry peaking between the early 17th and 20th centuries. Consequently, learning the age of the bones will help guide researchers toward more sound theories regarding how and why they ended up buried in the town. Ancient Demonic Drawing while examining a 2,700-year-old Assyrian clay tablet earlier this year at a museum in Berlin, Assyriologist Trolls Pank Arbol noticed a disturbing depiction of a demon with horns, a tail, and a forked tongue. Arbol was the first researcher to notice the 2.5-inch inscription, despite the artifact having been discovered decades earlier. The tablet, which was likely copied from a much earlier text, belonged to the private library of Kisir Ashur, a man who lived in Assur, an ancient city that was located in what's now northern Iraq, around 650 BC. Written in cuneiform, it contained remedies for a condition the Assyrians called Benu, which entailed epilepsy-like symptoms such as convulsions and involuntary movements and twitches. Modern medicine has come a long way since then. The Assyrians believed that demonic possession caused Bennu, which perhaps explains the devilish drawing Arbol noticed on the tablet. His months-long analysis of the barely noticeable image culminated into a study, in which he theorizes that the ancient society believed that the epilepsy-inflicting demon acts on behalf of Sin, the Mesopotamian moon god. While it was not unusual for the Assyrians to take a two-pronged approach to health problems using both magic and medicine, drawings on cuneiform tablets are rare, demonic drawings even more so. And although the inscription has been properly identified, the motivations behind whoever created it remain somewhat obscure. The most likely explanation in Arbol's words is that the demon appears as the healer who wrote the text must have imagined it. Inca Offering Straddling the border between Peru and Bolivia, Lake Titicaca was a sacred site to the Inca Empire. As the site of the civilization's creation story, the Isla del Sol, or Island of the Sun, situated in the lower part of the lake, was home to over 80 temples and other ritual-related structures throughout the Inca's heyday. A recently published study details how an international team of archaeologists recovered an andesite offering box on the lake's bottom, roughly 18 feet below the water's surface. Estimated to be at least five centuries old, the box measures around 14 by 10 by 6.5 inches and has an offering cavity accompanied by a stone plug. Inside was a llama figurine made from spondylus, the rare and valuable coral-colored shell of a spiny oyster, as well as a small rolled cylinder of gold sheeting. Researchers believe that the gold roll represents a chipana, a bracelet that Inca noblemen wore. Treasure hunters scavenged Lake Titicaca long before archaeologists arrived there, making the find an especially rare and valuable one. Altogether, parts from over two dozen offering boxes have been discovered. Researchers believe the offerings had various meanings, ranging from political statements to farm-related requests, co-author Christophe Delaire told National Geographic in an email, and the specific meaning of the recently discovered box's contents is unknown. Offering boxes allegedly sometimes contain the blood of children and animals, according to 17th-century cleric Alonso Ramos Gavilan, who recorded claims that as the boxes were lowered into the lake, the blood turned the surrounding water red. Residue analyses and other testing will hopefully reveal more about these cryptic artifacts, which experts can only speculate about for the time being. Egyptian Mystery Woman In 2017, archaeologists working along the west bank of the Nile at Dashur, a royal ancient Egyptian necropolis, discovered the foundations of a 13th century pyramid. They continued to dig until they reached the burial chamber, where they found wood fragments, which pieced together to form a coffin lid depicting a beautifully carved female face. Much to the surprise of experts, including Egyptologist Dr. Yasmin El Shazli, the entombed individual was not a king, but a mystery woman. A chest in her burial chamber bearing hieroglyphics may help lead researchers to her identity, but for now, the mummified woman is a complete stranger to them. There are some clues, however. What's really important about this chest is that we know it belonged to a princess because here it says, daughter of the king, and then it would be followed by the name, Dr. El Shazli said in Mystery of the Lost Pyramid, a Smithsonian documentary released earlier this year. But the name is the most damaged area, which is very frustrating. The ancient Egyptians believed that the worst thing you could possibly do to anyone was to erase their name. The woman's unknown identity is not the only mystifying thing about the pyramid, as Professor Aidan Dodson explained. 
This kind of pyramid design is specific to a king. It's not what you'd expect a junior member of the royal family to be in. Tomb and a chamber at the bottom of it, which makes the whole thing a real mystery. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Strange Stone Face Last year, a worker plowing a field in Newton Grove, North Carolina, discovered a very strange object without even realizing it. He hit a stone with the plow, so he picked it up and placed it at the edge of the field to get it out of the way. When the landowner, Tom Giddens, walked by the area, he happened to flip the stone over and saw that there was a face on it. Archaeologist Mary Beth Fitz, who works with the Office of State Archaeology as Assistant State Archaeologist, was very surprised by the find. As a 20-year veteran, she wanted to understand more about the face carved on the stone. In an attempt to get to the bottom of the situation, she created a 3D model of the sculpture and posted photographs of it on social media, appealing to the public for any information they may have about its origins. It really is mysterious, she said. We don't know what time period it's from, and it could be a piece of folk art, or it could have been made a long time ago. It's made of sandstone, and that's a pretty soft stone, so you don't need special tools to carve sandstone, so that means it really could have been carved any time in history. When do you think it's from? Any guesses of who might have made it? Let me know in the comments below! Bronze Age Gold in Denmark In 2015, archaeologists uncovered a cache of 2,000 Bronze Age gold spirals in a field on the Danish island of Zealand. While the site is a hotspot for Bronze Age artifacts, experts are stumped about what the thin, inch-long coils were used for, or what they even really are in the first place. They weren't the first gold spirals ever to be discovered, as others have been found in Germany and similar bronze coils have turned up in Poland, but they are the first such artifacts to appear in Denmark, and their purpose remains a long-standing mystery. Given the abundance of gold in the area, researchers speculate that the spirals, which date back between 900 and 700 BC, may have had ritual significance. Several other items made from gold, including rings, bracelets, and cups, have been unearthed over the last two centuries. Kirsten Christensen, an archaeologist with the West Zealand Museum, theorized shortly after the discovery that the coils originate from a time when the region's inhabitants worshipped the sun. They were found near a series of wooden and fur fragments that once probably made up a box that they were kept in. Further excavations are planned in hopes of uncovering more treasure, but the spirals still lack a definitive explanation. And now for number 8, but first want to give a big thank you to Michael Klein and Sonia4248. Thanks so much for supporting this channel! If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join us! Patom Crater Prior to 1949, only a few locals knew about a bizarre, otherworldly crater in Siberia that they called the Fire Eagle's Nest. Believing that the crater was a dark and evil place, they avoided going near it, and they even believed that animals avoided going near it as well. People had reasons for their superstitions, including numerous disappearances that had happened when people went near the crater and were never heard from again. Located in the Irkutsk region, the 131-foot-high, 328-foot-wide structure looks like a giant speaker from an aerial view. A Russian geologist named Vadim Kolpakov was the first scientist to encounter the Patom crater, as it came to be commonly known. At first glance, he was baffled, wondering if he had discovered an archaeological artifact, but also knowing that this was unlikely, as the ancient peoples of the region did not build rock pyramids. Upon closer examination, it became evident that the mound, measuring roughly 525 feet in diameter, is made of shattered limestone. Theories abounded about the crater's origins, including the possibility of a meteor having fallen on the site, and speculations about an alien ship having landed there and a nuclear reaction having occurred underground. Due to a lack of funding, the site was not thoroughly explored until the early 2000s, when scientists ruled out the more outrageous theories and even some of the rational ones, eventually concluding that a steam explosion had caused the crater to form around 500 years ago. Of course, not everyone is satisfied with this explanation, especially conspiracy theorists, who are adamant that some far more exciting event led to the crater's creation. Additionally, scientists cannot explain the strange events that have happened near the mound. Roman Holy Jar Found shattered into 180 pieces in a storage room at the Museum of Ontario Archaeology, an otherwise ordinary-looking jar dating back to when Romans ruled London is riddled with tiny holes, leaving experts stumped regarding what it was used for. 
The 1,800-year-old 16-inch tall vessel is unlike any other identified artifact from the Roman world. We've been sending it around to all sorts of Roman pottery experts and other pottery experts, and no one seems to be able to come up with an example, Katie Urban, a researcher at the London Ontario Museum, told Life Science in 2011. Researchers speculate that the jar may have held dormus, which ancient texts suggest that the Romans enjoyed snacking on, that it could have been a lamp, or that it was used for containing snakes. But much like the vessel itself, no one really knows what the heck it was for. During the 1950s, an archaeologist named William Francis Grimes gifted numerous artifacts from Roman-era Britain, which lasted from 43 to 410 AD, to the museum. Urban explained that the jar may have come from this collection, but admitted that it's not entirely known how it fell into the museum's hands. There are many possibilities as to what the jar's purpose was, and as Urban puts it, it's anyone's guess. What's your guess? Let me know in the comments! Humpback Whale Supergroups in a 2017 study, perplexed scientists reported observations of humpback whales, normally a solitary species, gathering off the South African coast in tightly knit supergroups, numbering as many as 200. Over the course of three research cruises during spring of 2011, 2014, and 2015, marine biologist and study leader Ken Findlay and the team of researchers witnessed three such gatherings of humpback whales. These are animals that normally are in groups of up to maybe three or four, Findlay told National Geographic. To see 200 together in an area the size of a football field is remarkable. The time of year made things even more confusing, as humpback whales typically only migrate to South Africa's cold waters during winter to feed. One theory posits that the whales found abundant food in these waters and simply decided to stay there instead of migrate. It's also possible that the species is thriving as it recovers from an era of whaling that nearly wiped it out, and scientists are noticing normal humpback whale behaviors that were less apparent at lower numbers. Ancient Bronze Artifact in Alaska in 2011, archaeologists unearthed a bronze buckle-like object in an ancient Inuit dwelling in Alaska. A small piece of leather wrapped around the artifact was radiocarbon dated back to 600 AD. And while this may not reflect the age of the buckle itself, it presented scientists with a quandary, as bronze was not manufactured or commonly used in Alaska at that time. Moreover, the item predated the home it was found in by several hundred years, according to John Hofiker, who led the excavation. Measuring roughly 2 inches by 1 inch, the buckle-like object was discovered in a 1,000-year-old dwelling. Researchers theorized that it may have originated in East Asia before traveling to Alaska via the Bering Land Bridge that once connected Siberia and North America. If this is indeed the case, the object may have been used as a harness or a horse ornament back in Asia, and as a clasp for clothing or as shaman's regalia after reaching Alaska. But experts do not know for sure what the item was used for on either continent, how it got to North America, or exactly where it came from. The buckle represents what's known as an out-of-place artifact, or upart, an artifact that does not fit with the time and or place it is connected with. Russia's Dancing Forest The Kironian Spit is a narrow sliver of land straddling the border between Lithuania and the Russian exclave of Kaliningrad. It's home to sandy beaches, a memorial dedicated to German philosopher Immanuel Kant, and hundreds of species of flora and fauna. Perhaps the most unique attribute of the Kironian Spit is a patch of oddly twisted trees nicknamed the Dancing Forest. Planted during the 1960s to stabilize the spit's giant dunes, the distorted trees take the shapes of corkscrews, rings, and other strange forms. There is both a scientific and a folk version of why this happens. While researchers are admittedly unsure of what causes the tree's distortion, of course they have a theory. Irina, a senior ecologist at the Kironian Spit National Park, explained to the Daily Telegraph, the curvature could be caused by pine shoot moth caterpillar larvae, which, when the tree was a sapling, damaged its stem and ate the apical buds, making the tree's trunk distort. The far more abstract folk theory proposes that the dancing forest follows the movement of the sands, or as one version of the story holds, a prince encountered a beautiful girl in the forest playing the lyre. He proposed to her and she agreed to marry him, if he converted to Christianity. As a compromise, the prince asked the young lady to show him the power of her god. She resumed playing her lyre and the trees began to dance. Roman Coins Found in Japan 
In 2013, ancient Roman coins dating back between the 3rd and 4th centuries were discovered among the ruins of Katsuren Castle in Okinawa, Japan. An X-ray analysis showed that at least one of the four copper coins, which measure between 0.6 and 0.8 inches in diameter, bear Constantine's image, while another depicts a helmeted soldier holding a shield in one hand and using the other hand to stab an enemy with a spear. The local education board, which was in charge of the excavation, noted to the Japan Times that the discovery likely pointed to the region's thriving trade with Southeast Asia and other parts of the world at the time. An Ottoman-era coin from 1687 was also found at the site, an unusual find, but it fits somewhat more appropriately with the time when the medieval castle flourished than the Roman coins do. This was the first and only known time when Roman coins were discovered in Japan, making the find truly remarkable. Moreover, experts have yet to establish exactly how and why the coins traveled to where they were buried. The Stargate Carving The Sakwala Chakraya, informally known as the Stargate Carving, is a strange map-like chart carved into a stone wall at Ranmasu Uyana, a 40-acre park in Sri Lanka containing ancient sacred gardens from the pre-Christian era. Many believe the carving contains the secret code for accessing a Stargate, a portal between Earth and outer space, which humans use for traveling to other parts of the universe and communicating with intelligent beings, according to Sri Lanka's tourism website. Site. There are four seats facing the chart, suggesting that four people could utilize it simultaneously. Some people associated the discovery of the Sakwala Chakraya with other known stargates throughout the world, including charts found in Egypt and Peru. All three carvings were found near waterways amid structures that were built using advanced engineering methods, causing many to see connections where they may or may not exist. One prevailing theory among those with big imaginations is that the stargates were used by aliens who visited Earth to mine gold. Supporters of this idea believe that nearby architectural features, including channels, tunnels, filters, and reservoirs, represent evidence of sophisticated planning done by extraterrestrials thousands of years ago. Not surprisingly, archaeologists are quick to dismiss these theories, instead sticking to more rational thought processes such as the notion that the engravings are simply maps of the Earth, or early Buddhist charts. These carvings also may depict animal evolution, or may have been used for meditation. Modern-day experts reject the idea that ancient Sri Lankan and Egyptian civilizations had anything to do with each other, instead arguing that there were two separate societies free from one another's influence. Regardless of what anyone believes, at the end of the day, nobody knows what the Sakwala Chakraya stands for or how it was used. Thanks for watching! Do you have any theories for these mysterious discoveries? Be sure to share in the comments below and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already! See you soon! Bye!